What? India is replacing Elon Musk's Starlink? Here's why. You've probably heard of SpaceX's Starlink satellite internet service, which was developed by billionaire entrepreneur Elon Musk. But did you know, there's another player in the race. Starlink claims to be able to give high-speed, low-latency internet connectivity to anyone, anywhere in the world, including the most remote and rural areas. But did you know that India is also developing its own Starlink replacement? In fact, India is taking over Elon Musk's Starlink project. Here is why. But before moving ahead, if you are new to this channel, make sure to hit that bell icon and subscribe so you won't miss out on future videos. In the space sector, India has accomplished a spectacular achievement by launching 72 satellites of one web in just 72 days. This is a historic achievement that has propelled India ahead of Russia, which previously held a record for launching 36 satellites in a single launch. What makes this accomplishment even more astounding is that India did not have a rocket with enough payload capacity to launch all of these satellites at the same time. How did India overcome this challenge and what motivated them to do so? To find this, we need to look at OneWeb's history and its competition with other space organizations and firms for offering worldwide internet access from space. OneWeb is a startup with an ambitious objective of linking everyone on Earth to high-speed broadband internet using a constellation of 648 low-Earth orbit satellites. The objective of OneWeb is to bridge the digital gap by providing individuals with education, healthcare, and economic opportunities. OneWeb's journey, on the other hand, has been riddled with obstacles and setbacks. Due to the COVID-19 epidemic, the company ran into financial difficulties and had to declare bankruptcy in 2020. The project was on the point of failure until a coalition of investors led by the UK government and Bharti Enterprises stepped in to rescue it. Utelsat, SoftBank, Hanwha, Hughes Network Systems and others are among other investors. Even after getting money, OneWeb had a problem of deploying its satellites into orbit as soon as feasible. This is due to the fact that OneWeb was not alone in its goal of providing worldwide internet connectivity from space. OneWeb needed to compete with its competitors and build a market presence before it was too late. This is where ISRO comes into play. They created a fleet of 648 satellites and enlisted the help of Russian space agency Roscosmos to launch them. The Russian rocket Soyuz and Proton were highly reliable at the time. Even NASA scientists used to deploy their astronauts to the International Space Station using these rockets. So the deal was completed. The expedition could finally begin. Russia successfully launched 428 satellites in 13 stages using its Soyuz rocket. But then Russia faced a new issue. For OneWeb, the Ukraine war changed everything. Because of the conflict, Russia was isolated in many respects around the world. Their banks were unable to make quick overseas payments. The Russian central bank's reserves were frozen for $630 million and Russia was subjected to numerous further penalties. In reaction, Russia began to exact vengeance on every Western country. Dmitry Rogozin, the chairman of Roscosmos, initially pulled out of the International Space Station and threatened Elon Musk, the founder of SpaceX, with death if he did not offer network connectivity to Ukraine. He didn't stop there. He also targeted the United Kingdom, which was one of OneWeb's major investors. He now wanted Russia to have a stake in it. And to make matters worse, Russia required OneWeb to provide a guarantee that they would not use their satellites for military operations against Russia before they could launch them. This demand was obviously refused by OneWeb, which also called off the launch. Later, Russia refused to give OneWeb its satellites back or provide them with any kind of compensation. OneWeb suffered a $239 million loss as a result. Russia refused to change its position despite extensive conversations. OneWeb understood that its chance of getting its satellites from Russia were low. 
And because of this, they decided against continuing and began looking for alternative ways to complete their task. And India then came into the picture. To launch their satellites, OneWeb considered collaborating with other space agencies. However, at that point, American and European commercial launch vehicles like Ariane 5 and Atlas 5 had already ceased to function. The new ones were occupied with Amazon's project Kuiper, including Ariane 6 and NASA's new Glenn, Vulcan, and Centaur. As a result, they sought out Asian agencies. However, they did not get much assistance there either. The H-2A rocket from Japan was unable to launch enough satellites at once. Many satellite companies did not trust China's Long March rocket family because some of China's satellites had lately fallen. Additionally, China was reducing its activities as a result of its zero COVID policy. OneWeb was left with only two options at this point. One was to turn to Elon Musk, a rival of their own, for assistance. ISRO was the other, but they started with the first choice. Luckily, Musk agreed to assist OneWeb despite being a rival and he launched 128 satellites for them successfully. But the fight with Russia had already cost OneWeb 8 months. In order to prevent further delays, they decided that they also needed the aid of ISRO for this project. That's why they went with ISRO, or the Indian Space Research Organization. ISRO is exceptionally good at launching satellites at a low cost and with high reliability. They have accomplished numerous astounding feats in space, such as sending an expedition to Mars for the price of a movie ticket. They also set a record for simultaneously launching 104 satellites, 96 of which were from the United States. ISRO is one of the top space agencies in the world, although few people are aware of it. When OneWeb requested ISRO's assistance, ISRO stated that they did not have a large enough rocket to launch all of their satellites. However, Prime Minister Modi instructed ISRO to go anyhow in order to assist OneWeb. So, ISRO developed two new rockets capable of performing the task. They were known as the Launch Vehicle Mark III or LVM-3. The LVM-3 rocket has three stages, solid, liquid, and cryogenic. Two S-200 strap-on boosters give the initial thrust for liftoff on the solid stage. The liquid stage is made up of an L110 core stage and two Vickers engines that propel the rocket forward. The cryogenic stage is made up of a C25 upper stage with a CE20 engine that propels the cargo into the appropriate orbit. The LVM3 rocket stands 43.43 meters tall has a diameter of 4 meters and weighs 640 tons. It can carry up to 10 tons of payload into low Earth orbit and 4 tons into geostationary orbit. With the help of this rocket, ISRO completed the OneWeb India 2 mission in two phases. The first phase was completed on October 22, 2022, when ISRO launched the first 36 satellites and then distributed the remaining 36 satellites to Elon on March 26, 2023. After that, finally, 618 satellites of one web are orbiting today. And very soon, the remaining 30 satellites are going to be launched through SpaceX. So after this successful launch, OneWeb has committed that they will provide high-speed connections all over India by the end of 2023. So why is India developing its own satellite internet service and what are the potential benefits for the country and its people? There are several reasons and benefits for India to have its own satellite internet service. First of all, India has a vast population of over 1.3 billion people, but only about half of them have access to the internet. This means that there are millions of people who are missing out on the opportunities and benefits of the digital world, such as education, healthcare, entertainment, commerce, and social interaction. Satellite internet can help bridge this digital divide and connect the unconnected especially in rural and remote areas where there is no or poor internet infrastructure. 
Secondly, India has a strong ambition to become a global leader in space technology and innovation. India has a successful space program that has launched over 100 satellites into orbit, including missions to the Moon and Mars. India also has plans to launch its own manned space mission by 2022 and its own space station by 2030. Having its own satellite internet service can boost India's space capabilities and prestige, as well as create new opportunities for research and development in the field of space communication. Thirdly, India has a strategic interest in ensuring its national security and sovereignty in the face of external threats and challenges. India faces geopolitical tensions with some of its neighbors, such as China and Pakistan, who have their own satellite internet services or plan to do so. China has launched over 100 satellites for its Beidou navigation system, which can provide military and civilian applications. Pakistan has partnered with China to launch two satellites for its PaxSat communication system, which can also serve military and civilian purposes. Having its own satellite internet service can help India counter these rivalries and enhance its defense and intelligence capabilities. Lastly, Starlink is very expensive. The initial cost of the hardware, which includes a satellite dish, a Wi-Fi router, cables, and a base, is 499 US dollars. The monthly subscription fee is 99 US dollars. These prices may vary depending on the country and region. While OneWeb has a cost of $12.95 per month, Starlink is not yet available everywhere. As of April 2023, Starlink has launched over 1,500 satellites, but it needs at least 4,000 satellites to provide global coverage. Starlink also faces regulatory hurdles in some countries, such as India, where it needs to obtain licenses and permissions from government authorities. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more fascinating videos. Don't forget to leave your ideas and opinions in the comments box below. See you next time.